Councillor Stintz, point of personal privilege. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I have two points of privilege that I'd like to raise. One is my privilege as a member of this chamber is being violated by the constant interruptions of Councillor Ford. Just because he doesn't like what he's hearing does not give him the right to stand up and interfere with members and their ability to speak and ask questions. So I would ask you to make a ruling and advise Councillor Ford that, and give him a warning, please, that our members as a chamber are being, our privileges as a chamber are being violated by his behaviour. Thank you, Councillor My second Spence. point of privilege, if I may, Madam Speaker, is that when we ask questions, we ask questions of the mover on the motion, and there was nowhere in that motion that justified the question that was posed to Councillor Min and Wong. So I would ask you to ask Councillor Ford to withdraw those remarks and ask him to contain his questions to the context of the motion that is before Council today. Thank you, Councillor Stintz. Uh, okay, count, we'll have to wait for Councillor. Okay, um, Councillor Carroll, questions to uh, Councillor Min and Wong. Yes, Madam Speaker, just some quick questions of clarification of yep. the motion. Yes. I believe those questions would be in order. Yep. Councillor Min and Wong is the mover of the motion, I think has chosen his words very carefully. Uh, these are in the order of council request. Council request, council urge, and finally, council urge the mayor to take a temporary leave of absence. Why did you choose the word urge? Well, councillor, I think as, as many of us know that, that we cannot force the mayor to do many of these things. And many, of, many people have claimed that this motion is symbolic. And to that, I, I will claim guilty. Um, but I'd like to remem remind members of council, symbols are important. The crest of the City of Toronto is an important symbol. Our motto, diversity is our strength, is an important symbol. When we raise flags like the Pride Day flag, that's an important symbol for the City of Toronto. And that's why I think it's important, because the whole world is watching, that we need to do the right thing and make a statement here today as a collective group. The petition says something as individual councillors, but as council as a whole, by passing this motion, we are saying that certain things must be done and certain activity by our mayor is unacceptable. Okay, thank you. So, so it, it admittedly uh, is, a, is a statement step uh, in motion form. You consulted the procedural binder. It doesn't overstep in any way. The question asked of the city solicitor earlier and any questions we've asked of, uh, of the procedural uh, rules of council over the past week in coming to this motion? I spoke yesterday with uh, the city solicitor and she said this motion was properly before us. And she also advised me that uh, in, terms of, in terms of operations, uh, this, is, this is an appropriate process. We don't have to go to the integrity commissioner. That's an additional process. It's not a required process. Um, and so I think today we need to take a stand, a principled stand, draw that bright moral line, and say today, and not wait, say today that this conduct is unacceptable and we want the, the mayor to take a leave of absence. Thank you. I have what I need, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Councillor Carroll. To speak, Councillor Mamaliti. Madam Speaker, thank you. Um, in the early 90s, I had the, the privilege of being a parliamentary assistant to the Minister of Health, who was responsible for the anti-drug strategy. That minister asked me to look at changing policy uh, and, and reflecting on how addicts are treated in this province. And we did that. It took us a year. I wrote a report that changed the policy on how uh, addicts to illicit drugs uh, were treated in the province, and it, it brought that, for, that particular ministry to a level it's never been before. Uh, before that, believe it or not, how we treated addicts uh, was with the Minister of Tourism uh, and not health. Uh, that report brought the, the issue to the health, uh, to the health uh, ministry and recognized certain ways of treating addicts. So I do know a little bit about... Uh, how to treat addictions and 
and I, I've known many, as some of you know, in your own families, perhaps, uh, some that suffer from addiction and the behavior that comes with that. Um, that, that behavior and, and how to deal with addiction uh, doesn't uh, mean that uh, you treat one person differently than the other. It doesn't mean that, um, that to some you could throw stones and, and to the rest you can't. It doesn't mean that someone's a politician and, and, and clearly needs help. Uh, means that you can do a flogging, as I think we're doing today, uh, and, and uh, publicly lashing at someone who, who I think, I think, is trying to reach out in his own way. And I, and, and I want to remind everybody about that, because if it were your children in your own homes, you wouldn't want your street coming out and publicly embarrassing you on your doorstep and telling you that your child has to move out. And, but because he's a politician, I guess people feel that, that we can do this. And I say to you, think twice. I, I need to move this motion, and I apologize. This item needs to be referred to the mayor. To the yeah. mayor's. And, and I, I, I believe that some of you think it's funny, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, uh, I believe that it needs to be referred to, uh, to him. Because as any addict... Any, any person, and I, and I say this to you, I don't believe him when he says he's not addicted. I say to you very clearly that I think that, that, that he is. Uh, I think that, that um, he's addicted to alcohol, and I think that the behavior clearly shows substance abuse uh, to illicit drugs. That's my particular position on this. And I would say to the mayor today, reconsider based on everything that's happening. I disagree with how we're dealing with this. I don't like it. I don't like what we're about to hear over the next few hours. And I certainly don't like the costs associated to this, knowing that this body can't, can't do anything to him with respect to his job. But what we can do is try and send a very sympathetic message. And at this point, that's what's needed. And you're hearing it from someone who has, has supported the agenda, has supported many of the ideas and the concepts that the mayor has brought forward over the last three years, and yes, in a very aggressive way. But I'll say this to you very clearly. If the mayor does not get help, if the mayor chooses to ignore some of the pleas from some of his colleagues on council, like myself, if the mayor doesn't recognize that he needs a, a proper uh, uh, consultation, a proper diagnosis by someone in the field, and that usually takes about 28 days. He may recognize uh, his issues in 28 days. If he doesn't recognize that some of us really want him to do that, and he would not, he would not suffer the consequences of losing his job, but in fact, regain perhaps some of the confidence and support uh, of this body and, and, his, and the electorate. If he doesn't do what some of us are asking to do, he will find himself alone. He will find himself alone amongst his colleagues. He will find himself alone amongst some of us that are trying to help. And he will f find himself alone, I think, in the city where there is a number of people, thousands of people, that want to restore their particular support for him. So, Mr. Mayor, I ask you, I ask you through the chair, reconsider. I'm asking that, that you take a look at this and do the right thing with respect to this. This is something you need to do. Just take 28 Ca days. Councilor Ma'am Leader, your time's up. You don't have to recognize that you, Th that you have an addiction. Thank you, Councilor Ma'am Leader. Your time's up. Um, and your, Councilor Ma'am Leader, your motion is out of order. Why? Because you didn't present it, you didn't follow the rules. It needs to be presented before you speak. So, so please, Mr. Madam, Madam Speaker, and I'm going to privilege that. Council, yes. Point of order. Uh, you, you know, Councillor Fletcher. I, okay. I, I know that. I know that. Look, if if someone else, I, I assume that this is the ruling that you're going to take on every in every particular case. Absolutely. Here, here Absolutely. Because it certainly hasn't been to this Those, day. Well, Councillor Mamley, if you remember at the beginning of the meeting, which I do at every meeting, I have every meeting is indicated to members of council that if you move a motion, never allowed it. You've never allowed it. Never allowed it. Never allowed it.
that you need to read your motion, present your motion before you speak. So, and Councillor Stintz, I'm on your point to personal privilege. I will deal with it after lunch, okay? And Councillor Perks to speak, and that will be the last speaker. Before lunch. Yes, before lunch. Speaker, I have a motion that City Council refer MM 41.25 to the Integrity Commissioner and request that she undertake an investigation of the violations of the Code of Conduct by Mayor Rob Ford and report back to the April 1 and 2, 2014 meeting of City Council with any recommendations for appropriate penalties or sanctions. Members, I'm heartbroken. We all are. All over, all over the city of Toronto, people are, are stopping at work to watch new revelations on television, to watch new things, to read about new things in the media. We're broken. If this were a member of one of our families if, or a friend, we would drop everything and rush to offer assistance and guidance. It would be the first thing we would do. But we're in a very different circumstance here. We're dealing with the duly elected mayor of this council and we're dealing with him as elected officials. We have a very different duty than we would if it were a member of a family. Our duties are constrained. We cannot vote the mayor out of office. To do so, and more importantly, we should not vote the mayor out of office. To do so, we to start to choose which votes count whether you voted for someone that the rest of council wants to vote out or whether you voted for someone who perhaps didn't have a problem. It should never be the responsibility of an elected body to choose whether or not one of their members holds office. That's what elections are for. We also are constrained that we can't get involved in any of the criminal allegations or potential criminal charges. Again, we shouldn't. It is absolutely wrong for a government to get involved in the criminal justice process. That literally leads to a police state. So we find ourselves being forced to deal with a question with very few options in front of us. We find ourselves profoundly constrained, yet urgently needing action for dealing with problems that are absolutely unacceptable dealing with a mayor who has been asked by people from every corner of this city to resign and who refuses steadfastly to do it. Yet we have to do something. We've dealt with these kinds of ethical breaches before and the one thing that we have learned is when we deal with them, we need the best advice, we need to understand the legal framework and we need to come up with measures that can actually be enforced. If the Integrity Commissioner recommends a penalty, the, the member is required to live by that penalty. And if they refuse to do so, then, then <coughs> we have a serious tool to, to wield. It is important that we maintain the symbols of the City of Toronto, but what is more important is that we confirm for all Torontonians that the mechanisms of government work. It is important that we restore respect for this council, respect for the electoral process, and respect for our ability to deal with this matter seriously. Not deal with it based on a, a, an entirely well-meaning motion that's hastily scribbled in the middle of a crisis. No, we need to have the professionals advise us what is the applicable law, what are the appropriate penalties, and what are the ways we enforce those penalties. We had a report from the Integrity Commissioner in her annual report just last June. In that, she talked about a Supreme Court case about the different roles that municipal councillors take. It uh, had to do with St. Boniface, and it was heard by Mr. Justice Sapinka. In that, he says that we have to be very conscious of when we're performing which role. And the Integrity Commissioner reinforced that advice and said, in those times when we are adjudicating the behavior of another member of council, we must be at our most serious, we must be at our most unbiased, and we must have the facts and the legal arguments in front of us. There's one last thing I wanted to say. Over the last two weeks, I have had conversations with virtually every member of this council. And I feel 
better for that. I have seen people who have been in conflict rise, sit together, and reason about how we solve this very, very difficult problem. As much as I am ashamed of the mayor's behavior, I am proud of the conduct of this council. It's a pleasure to serve with you. I know we'll do the right thing. Thank you, Councillor Perks. So, please remind members of the public. Now, um, we will um, recess uh, t for lunch. And uh, as I mentioned with Councillor Stintz, I will deal with uh, points of pers uh, personal privilege that you've uh, indicated after lunch with count uh, concerning Councillor Ford. Thank you.